so eight years ago, um, I was in a very dark period of my life, um, which I would think is my rock bottom. And what was happening is I was grieving. I lost my mother in a tragic car accident. Um, so I was grieving that. I got laid off from my nine to five that I was giving 60 hours a week to. Um, and about two months after that, my dog died. So I was like at the worst of the worst that I could be at. And mentally, I just needed to escape and I needed a change. And I think for the people that are really feeling cluttered or overwhelmed in their spaces, these are small changes that you can make. For me, I made a big change and I wanted to go traveling to try to find myself. So what I actually ended up doing was leasing my pro so listing my property online um, and getting a midterm rental uh, that actually booked my property for several months um, while I was away. And not only did it cover my travel, like my day to day bills, it actually covered majority of my travel expense. Welcome to the Landlord Diaries, where we talk about midterm rentals and the opportunities behind them. We'll share landlord stories, talk about maximizing investment potential, and discuss how to live the very best landlord life. This podcast is proudly brought to you by Furnished Finder, the leader and largest online marketplace for midterm rentals. Remember to like and subscribe if you enjoy our content. Katie, 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 it's your host, Kelly, Kelly, Kelly of the Landlord Diaries. We are here with another great episode focused on co-hosting and design. Get ready. Katie, who do we have today? Today, we get to talk with Tatiana, who is an interior designer, and she is also a co-host for midterm and short-term rentals. And this is a really great discussion because I feel like short-term properties, you know, you have themed properties and properties that are super designed and all over the top. And midterm rentals, a lot of people are kind of like, what exactly do I need to do? How much do I need to design? Like, do I need X? Do I need Y? Where do I start? How do I do this? And it can get really, really overwhelming and kind of confusing. It can also get really expensive if you kind of go down the wrong path. So Tatiana is here with some great tips for design and we do something fun. We have her look at one of Kelly's properties and one of my properties and give us some feedback. And guys, these properties could not be more different. Like they're literally night and day, which is so fun. So you're definitely going to want to listen to this one. Open your notes app to jot down some ideas and some quick, quick ideas that will take the design of your property just to the next level. So please enjoy. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share with friends, give us a review. We put so much hard work and love into this and we love um, any and all feedback that we can get back from you guys. Thanks so much. Today, we talk with a Furnish Finder co-host, Tatiana Taylor-Tate, an award-winning designer based in Vancouver, British Columbia, and co-founder of the Level Up Your Listing Summit. Tatiana has combined her interior design and real estate experience to mentor investors all over the world on how to skyrocket their profit using short-term and mid-term rentals. Tatiana was one of our amazing speakers at the 2023 Midterm Rental Summit. She gave a fascinating talk on the psychology of space. Tatiana, thank you so much for being with us today. How are you? Good, good. Thank you so much for having me. It is an honor to be able to speak on your guys' podcast. Thank you so much. So I'm going to break this episode into two parts. Our first part is going to jump straight into her amazing design advice. The second portion, we're going to talk about Tatiana's portfolio and the 12 short-term, mid-term rentals that she co-hosts, owns all the different balances there uh, in the U.S. and Canada. So let's start off with psychology of space. What 
is that and how would you describe it? Right. I feel like so many people don't understand when you first approach it. But as soon as you explain it, you're like, oh, yeah, that really affects me personally. So the psychology of space is actually how our physical environment is how sorry, our mental state is affected by our physical environment. And what this can be is if a room is too dark, if it seems gloomy. I know we've all kind of maybe stayed in those basement apartments that have like little to no windows. And you're wondering after a while why you might feel depressed or tired all the time. These are things that are actually all due to the psychology of space, which is so fascinating because how we design our spaces can affect not only our mental states, but our overall sleep patterns. And it can reduce anxiety, stress, all while really increasing serotonin levels in your, in your brain. And yeah, so it is so cool to really think that how we design our spaces, not only for ourselves, but for our guests, how this can really affect their overall experience and enhance your property. Oh, that intrigues me about the serotonin levels because I've I've done a little bit of research on that. And so many people that have depression or go through uh, anxiety, it's their so serotonin levels that are off, right? Mm-hmm. That's so funny. I mean, even my husband, his office is in the basement and he'll come up some days and he'll be like, I just can't do it. I can't be in the basement <laughs> for another day. And I'm like, yeah, I get it. Like you need, <laughs> you need some space. <laughs> For sure. So this is a kind of a fun aspect, real life psychology of space. What do you feel like Katie and I's podcast backgrounds give off vibe wise? Very bright and airy. I was just going to say Katie's especially is super bright, super bright. I feel bad for your husband. It's in the basement. <laughs> um, and for you, Kelly, like I love you have the stone behind you. And what really kind of helps with the process is incorporating organic materials in your spaces. It'll allow you to feel more grounded, more open and enlightened to your surroundings. So I think you guys are doing great so far. <laughs> well, if Thank only you. you could see the mess on this side. Yeah, well, it's crazy that you mentioned that because one of the things, especially when I spoke at the MTR Summit, is I love to share an example. And one of the examples I have is two photos. And so in photo A is a room that's kind of dark, dingy, cluttered with things, um, definitely disorganized. And then um, option two is basically the room, it feels bright and airy, it's clean, it's organized, everything's kind of put away. And I always ask the audience, I'm like, who would feel, you know, overwhelmed and anxious in room one? And then the audience all raises their hands. And then when I go, what about room two? Would you feel more productive? And everyone's nodding their head, yes. And then the big shocker is it's the same room that I'm showing in the photos. And everyone's just like, I can't, I can't believe that. And it's just simple differences in how you not only organize your space, but when you really think about functionality. Yeah, and I think we all hit a point where we're like, okay, before I do anything else, I need to tidy this up. At least I do. Like, I will have a very productive day, but then it'll it'll reach that point where it's like, okay, I need to stop and get this under control because my mind often feels like my environment. So, okay. So Tatiana, talk to us, what's your design style and how does your interior design process work? Yeah. So my particular design style is organic modern, but that does not mean that is my client style. Um, that is if I had the choice, that's what I would be doing all the time. But being in the short term rental slash midterm rental space, um, we actually get to test out many different ones from mid-century modern to industrial to modern transitional, you name it. Um, we've really dabbled in it, which is always fun. It keeps us on our toes creatively. Um, when we are doing more midterm rental spaces, we always wanna keep in mind a timeless aesthetic applied to the space 
because not only do we want people to feel comfortable um, and that the spaces are welcoming, but we actually want to give them that satisfaction that this is a space created for them to truly call home. And the way that you can, the easier that you can make that possible by creating a space that is timeless and elegant, but also easy that they can just add their own touch on it when they bring their small pieces or luggage over, then that's really going to help the guest experience be enhanced. For sure. All right, Tatiana. So let's get into the nitty gritty of uh, like just all the design advice that you have. So let's start off with how should a midterm rental host properly set up a space so that everyone feels elevated? Yes. Well, one of the things is making sure that you all design is a portion of the property, but really the essentials and how you set up your spaces for that I find is the most valuable. So over eight years of hosting myself, I kind of created a whole furnishing checklist, which I shared at the MTR summit as well. And that checklist has everything that I believe should be turnkey within a property. And I'll probably, Kelly, give you that link again so you can share it. Um, and aside from the furniture, there's things that you do want to consider for the property. So is the kitchen fully stocked? Do you have a spice caddy and different options for cooking for your guests. One of the things that we always provide, um, especially being in Vancouver, British Columbia for the properties that we manage out here, our clients that are traveling are very multicultural. So we wanna make sure that we have the cooking utensils that they need to do so. so. Things like rice cookers, chopsticks, you name it. Those are things that we have um, stocked in every single one of our properties. If it is a property that is, you know, not in the city, maybe it's more of a rural run. Do you have things, if there was a power outage, things like that, that are just the normal essentials for the day to day to maintain the home. But when it comes to design, of course, there's things that, you know, your main items that you want to invest in are your high touch ones, which are made up of five things. That is your mattresses and bed frames, your sofa or sectional, of course, and your dining room table and chairs. These are the things that you should be spending the most money on in your home because you do not want to continuously replace them year after year. They are the high traffic items that are getting the most wear and tear and the most beatings if we like it or not. So you definitely want to make sure that if let's say a sofa or a sectional that you're getting does it have high performance fabric? Is it a color that is easy to get stains out of? I actually personally have been like, I knock on wood every time I say this, but I've been so lucky that I have had like a off white cream sectional in one of our properties and it still is perfectly in great shape. No wow. stains or tears, but that is all due to us investing in a high performance fabric and ensuring that, you know, if a stain were ever to happen, we, you better believe we do have an upholstery guy on speed dial if we need him, but we haven't needed him yet. Aside from that, things that we will be talking about um, that I noticed uh, at the end of this call when we kind of dive into some designs here is really thinking about how many people are going to be in the space and making that functional for them. So if you have people that are booking, you know, three to six month stays and they're there for work, do you have a desk available? So, or a functional workspace, are you going the extra mile and maybe providing like a printer or an additional screen for someone to use? You really want to think out of the box in these situations, especially to who, what type of guest you are actually creating your space for. So before, like, let's put design aside, essentials aside, your step one, really, when you are starting to create your space is who am I creating my space for? Who is my ideal guest avatar? So let's say that's a travel nurse. What are you doing to make sure that that space fits their needs? Are you doing blackout curtains in every bedroom? Are you adding um, 
basically any kind of noise machines to block out um, street noises? Are you adding earplugs for a better sleep, ensuring that the mattress is extremely comfortable for your guests? These are things that you want to consider depending on who is staying in your space. I want to gear it uh, in a direction that I really enjoyed on our intro call, which was you said each room should tell a story and have a focal point. So tell us more about that. Today's episode is proudly sponsored by Furnished Finder, the ultimate platform for hassle-free midterm rentals. Whether you're a seasoned landlord or just getting started, Furnished Finder has everything you need to find your next tenant. With Furnished Finder, you can say goodbye to booking fees, markups, and commissions, and hello to direct bookings. If you're ready to experience all the benefits renting your property for 30 days or more, head over to FurnishedFinder.com where you can list your property for one low annual price. We make it easy to get started. I have always been that person when I'm traveling I'm like the one that's likely, maybe I'm too nice, but I always get stuck with the worst room and I'm tired of having the worst room. So what we do in every single one of our spaces, again, going back to who your ideal guest is and what telling your brand story. So your brand story can also not only be why you got into hosting in the first place, or you can actually create some of the spaces that we do. We create like a fictional character of who we think would be basically who the house embodies. So is that, you know, a female who's quite whimsical um, and outgoing and creative? How are you going to create that throughout your spaces? And when we do rooms, what we like to do is each room, as you mentioned, has a focal point of itself or has some kind of selling point or unique um, sale, like selling point is what I like to say. And for some of our rooms, we do, we have a client that really is one of my favorites, which is one of the one that I sent over is a client in Dallas. And that whole property, everything in it that is used is done by local um, support, is supported by and done by local black artists or businesses all within Dallas. And very that, cool. Yeah, that was one of the things that was so amazing, like down to the toilet paper, which you wouldn't believe. I didn't even know you could buy like just toilet paper like that. But it is really cool to see and the amount of people that actually book and that is what they comment on. On We had one that was so beautiful was a mother and daughter came in and they stayed at one of our properties for a couple of months. And she, we had a lot of black beauty magazines in that property and she made sure to let us know how valuable that was to have in the space for her daughter to be able to see and learn more about the style hairstyles that she can do and there was actually a game um, about black cult history and black culture and that was something that was really truly special for them so we hold that um, review very dear to our heart yeah i think that ties in with what you say about make sure that your space is a reflection of your brand. And it sounds like there was a specific target market here and a brand that your client is building that has resulted in beautiful reviews. Yes. And it's a topic that's very dear to her heart. Um, So we're glad that we were just able to recreate that and create a safe space for people to really feel truly at home. Um, Aside from that, we've done ones. I have a property called The Peach, and that one is in the Okanagan here in Canada. And everything around this house, this house is a little bit more elevated um, and luxurious in the design, but all the accents throughout the home. We've branded everything from the welcome mats to uh, the photography in the space is all beautiful landscape photography um, or photos done by local artists. 
We have a branded neon sign that says life's a peach. Um, really, <laughs> and it. that's in one of the rooms. Um, Katie, it's making me think of the banana, the banana bungalow. bungalow. Yes. yes. Yeah. In Las Vegas. <laughs> okay. So I want to, I want to hit on a few quick practical tips um, that our MTR landlords can implement. Um, I think this will lead us right into the minute to win it topics. Um, but the first question I have is, I guess it's a, a little bit of a few parts is how um, do you recommend setting up a bed? Because I've seen people set up beds all sorts of different ways. Um, and how much do you recommend putting on a nightstand? Because we want it to be cute, but we also want people to have room for their own items. And then third part is what type of a budget do you recommend for a studio or a one bedroom apartment? Okay. Um, so for the first question, which was how should you set up your bed? Um, with that, I am a big advocate for you should not, unless it is a room that you are offering two twin beds um, or some kind of bunk bed situation in, all mattresses should always be at least a queen size. If you can fit king size mattresses in every single bedroom, that is something that I would do um, aside if I was going to do a two twin situation. Um, the reason I always recommend this is because for your beds, a d basically a double or a full is not big enough for a couple to sleep in comfortably. And at the end of the day, we know sleep is so important when it comes to all of our listings and rentals. The next thing is, I know this is like a huge conversation online. I see it in the Facebook groups all the time is what color sheet should I be having? 100% your sheet should always be white. And the reason that is, is not only because you can bleach things and get it out, um, get stains out, but you can all there's the psychology key behind it where people actually resonate white linens with luxury so you want to make sure that you do that and low-key like any linens that are like gray or black i'm kind of questioning that right um, like, they're sus <laughs> right <laughs> yeah. and, are they clean are they not yeah. what's happening here that is one thing what i like to believe that you can actually have fun pops of color in throw blankets or quilts um as well as accent decorative pillows i am a big like i'm really big into decorative pillows i know everyone's husbands are like throwing them on the floor um at the end of the day but how you really set up your bed and make the bed can truly make the space like my room, for example, an unmade bed or one that just has a couple of normal like sleeping pillows isn't too special. But once you throw um, some decorative accent pillows and a quilt at the end of the bed, it really feels like, oh, wow, I can like run and dive into that bed and I'm going to have the best sleep of my life. And that's what you really want to create for people. So I would say depending on the size, let's say a king size bed, I do four normal pillowcase, like your standard pillows um, with white pillowcases. And then I will have for a king size anywhere from two European shams or two decorative like 20 by 20 accent pillows. And then I do a little 16 by 20 lumbar pillow below. As for nightstands, a lot of people, this is kind of up to your preference. I do, so I always have the lamps, um, the table lamps on the nightstand, unless I'm doing a sconce. I do like to have at least one uh, photo on the nightstand, depending on which side, if it's the left or right side. And then what we also do is either an alarm clock or... Um, a little tray. If there's a TV in the room, we will put the remote on the tray, but that is about it. Everything else is available. Sometimes we have a charger already put in. That's one of those like wireless ones that you can just set your phone on. Um, but other than that, we try to simplify it as much as possible. If 
we really want to go the extra mile, we'll add like a little faux succulent or plant on the nightstand, but it depends on the size of them. If it's just a small, like 20 inch nightstand, then I would just limit you to your table lamp um, and not much else other than that. All right. And then what do you think about a budget for a studio or a one bed? And then we'll get to these quick hitting minute to win it tips. So for a studio or one bed, it really depends um, on the quality that you're wanting to go. So for a mid to high range, and when I say mid to high range, this can be your CB2, your Rove Concepts, Pottery Barn, West Elm, a mixture of those items with Wayfair, for example. If when I quote projects, I usually do it turnkey. So that means everything from the forks to the knives to the three sets of bedding, which that was one thing I forgot to mention. Every single mm-hmm. bed that you have should have three sets of linens. Uh, don't forget your bed bug mattress protectors and yep. bed bug pillow protectors, as well as ditch the comforters. If you have a comforter, that is a huge no-no. It needs to be a duvet insert <laughs> um, with duvet cover. But for something like that, you can be anywhere from a good rate if you're paying it yourself is I would say 7,500 to 10,000 for a studio, um, depending how detailed you're really going with your furniture. Hey landlords, are you ready to level up your rental game and simplify your midterm rental business? Well, get ready to meet your new best friend, KeyCheck. KeyCheck is your all-in-one solution for stress-free property management. With tenant-paid screenings, online rent payment processing, custom lease creation, and a suite of incredible landlord tools, you'll wonder how you ever lived without it. No more chasing down checks or sifting through piles of applications. KeyCheck helps you organize and manage all things landlording in a simple and efficient way. Make landlord life a breeze with KeyCheck, the game changer for modern property owners. Visit KeyCheck.com to unlock the power of stress-free property management and take your rental business to new heights. All right, Kelly, let's get into these minute to win it. And with these minute to win it, we're going to ask you, Tatiana, a topic or a question. And we just want to hear kind of like your top tips that we can um, hear and that the our landlords can put into action. So the first one, things that make your home look cheap and what to do instead. <laughs> Things that make your home look cheap is those, I feel like people can really imagine what I'm saying. You know, those white plastic chairs, usually they're from Ikea uh, for your dining table. Please ditch those. You can really just go to Home Goods if you're on a budget and get some great, unique dining chairs for your space, Um, even on Wayfair or using services like Minoan, where you can get designer discounts um, for your items. These are things that I'd recommend investing in. Again, we wanna make sure that they're durable, but please stop doing the, buying those chairs. And what about rugs? Rugs, it's ensuring that your rug is actually the right size for your space. So what and- is the right size for people? It depends on what you're doing, but for example, your bedrooms, rugs, depending on the space that you have, you need to do like a six by nine or an eight by 10 or nine by 12, depending on the size of your room. If your room is a 10 by 10, you can get away with a six by nine um, to really ensure that you're having as much coverage as possible. And you really want to make sure that your rug either starts just before or covers just under your nightstands. um, And you can really see an even amount um, around the bed. Same thing with living your living rooms. You want to make sure that your furniture is just sitting, the front legs are just sitting on the rug and it is covering enough of your space. Do not be buying five by seven or smaller rugs for your living room where it only looks like a patch of grass for your coffee table. I love that. Yes. I love that. Okay. How about matching furniture sets? 
matching furniture sets. I did the, I did um, a whole thing about this actually on Instagram recently. Matching furniture sets are really dating your properties. So I would stay away from it. Um, we try really right now. The thing is about how you are mix and matching pieces. So especially if you're doing like modern transitional or modern farmhouse, how are you finding unique items that can really complement one another in your space? So ditch those matching furniture sets. I'm sorry. I know everything was on sale at Ashley's, but it has to go. <laughs> so how should someone that doesn't necessarily have a great design eye choose mismatch p pieces to go together? Yeah. So right now the things the tools that are online for someone that doesn't have a design eye isn't working with a designer that i would really recommend um, incorporating in your business as you kind of do your research is one pinterest is your best friend um, use it it's exactly like a search engine like google you can type anything from like fireplace corner fireplace how to design my space and it will pop up a bunch of different inspirational photos for you to take ideas from um same thing with right now which is the big trend is ai there are tons of ai tools out there that really can help you go that extra mile when it comes to creativity um and put things out there so don't be afraid to play around with those they actually have some great tools where you can take a photo of your space as is and upload it um, into ai tools like mid journey um Ooh. and they will actually recreate that space some of them will be above your budget of what <laughs> they will recreate it to be um, but of course it's those small little pieces that you take from that, that you can apply to your space. All right. How about shelf styling? This is always a challenge for me. I'll have like cute shelves or a dresser or something like that. And I'm like, okay, I need to make this look cute. And then I freeze and I don't know what to do. <laughs> Yes. So I absolutely love shelf styling. And it's so funny. I've done so many videos on these recently on my Instagram because I felt like that's what people really struggle with. So when you do shelf styling, you do kind of want to put it in a three to one ratio. So how how many things if you're, for example, centering one item on one of the shelves, let's say we do um, two coffee table books and a beautiful plant or vase on one section, then that means on the next shelf, you want to make sure that you're spacing your items out. So basically when it comes to eye level, everything's not cluttered in the center. You're going to put some things basically from the one shelf, you'll have everything in the center. Now the shelf moving up, you're going to have, let's say, a photo um, of your favorite like local place or some kind of artistic piece that you love. And then on the right hand side, maybe we add um, a candle or a couple different books that you're reading and you really wanna space it out. So it goes a set of three and then one below. All right, Kelly, I don't know about you, but I am ready to have Tatiana dive into at least your listing. We'll see how much time we have. Um, so what do you Let's think? Let's do it. Okay. So, you know, guys, we want to be real on the show. So one, Tatiana has picked a room in my cottage that she would like to give advice on. So Kelly's style is definitely like welcoming and homey. I would say it's more traditional than modern. Yes. And I did want to give, so kind of a recommendation on the overall of the property, because there's a couple little spaces. It's a great space. Um, but there were some things, especially when you have a smaller property, a guest house, you can really do so much because you're working within such a small space. And one of the things that I wanted to mention was if you go, so if you go first, Kelly, to your front porch, that was one thing that kind of really caught, like caught my eye was with your front porch, we only have a couple of chairs out there. 
and you have such a great space to really utilize the use there for your guests, especially if they're staying long term. Because if it were me staying at booking this property, a lot of the beauty of the home is actually outside in the backyard. And yes. I would want to embrace that as much as possible. So for your deck, so there's two camping chairs um, out in the front. I would really invest in like a hanging swing chair or a hammock even or something for people to really grab a good book or enjoy their morning coffee out on that porch. And then in the back, of course, adding an eating area. So this this guest house sleeps only two. Is that correct? Yes. And it's 600 square feet uh, for those that didn't catch that. I agree. Your patio is so cute there. Thank you. We love the cottage and it's very popular. Even adding a splash of color, Kelly, to the kitchen would really make it pop as um, when people are first seeing mm -hmm. the listing. Yes. For Which color would you choose? So it's kind of like browns and blacks and whites. Uh, is is the colors that came with the with the kitchen and like some light toper grays. Yeah, I'd have to think about it, but I really think it's in need of a pop of color. You can have some fun in there. And when I look at this one, the cottage, it just reminds me of something like in the South. And I would really kind of want to encompass that as much as possible. I feel like even though the cottage is tiny, it has its own little personality, so it can be a little sassy. So you can have some fun with that space. As for the bedroom in the cottage, um, this one, I would really add that pizzazz like we were mentioning with the decorative pillows and a throw blanket because as soon as you're standing in the space and see that bed, it is going to look so inviting, so homey. Um, I would make sure that you have just for balance in the space, you always want to ensure that you are fitting nightstands on both sides with table lamps on both sides and then maybe adding um, just some more art in the space. But I know you're kind of limited above the bed because you have the air conditioner unit. But other than that, like it's a beautiful space. Maybe you want to add a rug under the bed just for added comfort. Mm, that'd be oh, good. that could be cute. Yes. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. I wouldn't see, and I wouldn't, for those of you who can't see the um, the bed that Kelly has is it's a black frame bed and she's got a gray comforter or blanket on it. Um, but there's, I'm, is it vinyl floors, Kelly? Yes. Vinyl floors underneath <clears throat> and the bedroom's kind of at the end of a little hallway because the trick with some of these small spaces is if you have a 600 foot cottage, it, it might be laid out in a quirky way, <laughs> right? Um, but I could, so there's not necessarily a door that it looks like you open and the bed is there. However, there's this hallway. And I think that's a great idea with that rug underneath, maybe to separate the space and to just make it look really inviting. So I think those are great tips. That would be a pop of, of color. What color would y'all go with the, with the rug, like a white and gray, like maybe uh, a marbly look, or what do you think? Well, you can even go as bold. So on your right, Kelly has some beautiful um, hand-painted artwork on the wall. And even picking up some tones in that that you really like can help tie the room together. Okay, guys, we're going to sh now show one of my properties that's like night and day from Kelly. So Kelly has this like kind of country feel, back house. Mine is a studio that's close to a university. Um, so Tatiana, Tatiana, we'll show you this one. I know we're throwing it on you. Um, and maybe we'll just keep this simple. So give us like three tips for this space. Cause this is a, this is a small space. I don't remember how many square feet it is, but it feels like 10. I do think this one is actually pretty good. Um, things that, so one of the things again, add an extra, you want two matching nightstands, two lamps for balance um, visually, as well as to accommodate that second person. We all know they have phones, they need to charge and everything like that. Right. That's a good um, idea. And then 
right under that window. I'm not sure what's on the right, but what I would actually do, sorry, not under the window, under the hallway mirror that you have there, what's across from that hallway mirror? The bathroom. The bathroom. So what I would probably do, depending on your sizing, I would probably find a very thin ottoman um, that you can mm. sit there for when people want to put their shoes or their bags down as soon as they enter the home. Um, well, that's a great there, idea. I think there's, is there a closet right across from the entry? There's there? a closet right by the front door. Yes. So those are things that you want to consider. Um, or even like a very, I know even Ikea has these very like tiny, I think they're like six inch um, little wall units that you can put on that store shoes and things, but it's just a great thing to put keys on um, or anything that is important for people to grab and go. That's one thing that I would do. You need a doormat on the inside of your door there so people aren't tracking mud in. I've always put the doormats on the outside. Yes. I, I should I, probably put one on the inside too. I've never thought of doing two. That's a good idea. I do both. Yes. And just because even though you're, the outside is like the welcome mat. That's like, right. oh, this is a great space for you to be in. Welcome. And then the inside is really where people are kind of tracking the most dirt um, that's one thing to think about. But other than that, like, I think your space is great. It's clean. Um, you've decorated the bed, right? You could always increase the height of your curtain rods that will make the space feel a lot larger. So you want to do it at least between two to three inches from the ceiling. That's really going to open it up. Um, the other thing that you could do depending on the space is have like, two ottomans floating at the end of the bed that gives extra seating space for people um oh, that's a great idea people, too yeah if anyone's visiting or anything like that especially if they're booking it long term right they might have another couple come so that's one thing that i would consider as well as adding two more chairs to the dining table or at least having them in storage there in that in the laundry storage closet so people, if they want to have any friends over for dinner, that they can seat them. Wow, guys. If you're not feeling this vibe, like Tatiana knows what she is doing. So that transitions us very well into the co-hosting side. If you're like, hey, I'm not feeling this on my own. Co Tatiana is one of those on our show that is available for co-hosting and has partnered with six um Furnish Finder hosts, I don't know if it's hosts, but six listings um, on Furnish Finder in the U.S. And then she also has six in Canada. So Tatiana, give us an overview of your portfolio. How many do you own? Do you co-host? How? What's your portfolio look like? Yeah, so there is 12 properties right now in our portfolio. We are taking, we're in talks right now, taking on a couple of more, um, but I am very selective in um, our portfolio at this time, which is always good. We want to make sure that they are properties that we hold, that will be held to the same standards that we have. Um, right now, I own one um, the rest that I rental arbitrage, the rest out here, um, as well as co-host and manage others for clients uh, in Vancouver, BC, the lower mainland, the Okanagan, as well as in throughout the states. So the ones what are your locations the in the states? Mainly in Dallas and Atlanta um, at the moment. And nice. however, one of the things I did want to bring up, especially there should be more of an influx of hosts using Furnish Finder right now, especially in Dallas, because they just went through a short-term rental ban. So this right. is the time really to ensure that your properties, if you have them in Dallas, that you are doing those refreshers to your spaces and getting them listed on Furnish Finder for those long-term rentals, because they're still out there, those midterm um, to long term guests are looking for spaces in those cities. Um, aside from that, the other properties, so I do, as I mentioned, rental arbitrage and I own um, 
and then the co-hosting and managing. I actually started my short-term rental journey through Rental Arbitrage, so it always has a special place in my heart, which is where you sublease a property from a landlord and rent it out as a short-term or mid-term rental. As for the ones that I co-host and manage, a lot of my clients, I have been, they have been with me from the very beginning um, or their family and friends get brought on through word of mouth, um, which is always a great thing to have. And I absolutely love managing other people's homes, especially really getting to share another space that is not necessarily in our country um, and learning as much as possible I can about that area. So it's pretty cool because when we bring clients on, we do our research, of course, of what type of client or guest is going to be staying in the area, um, what they're really looking for, things to see and do, like the amount of recommendations I could probably give for Atlanta and Dallas, and I have never stepped foot in those places. Um, it is pretty cool, like when you can recommend, oh, this restaurant's great, um, and you really know what the local spaces are without even being there. It's really cool, um, and it's it's a journey. Some of my clients, so the client that I shared with you for the Dallas one, they've been a client for over two years now. Um, and we've, it's been cool to see not only the growth of the property, but the growth of that client and what their interests are. So they actually are sourcing another property to buy in, uh, Houston now because they were so happy with not only the returns that they got, but how we've been taking care of their property. That's amazing. And I really like the way you go about doing your co-hosting because you don't have them set up an annual contract. It's month to month and you put a lot of ownership and buy-in on that owner where they're more involved, where you're almost teaching them through the process and then they could continue to do it on their own if they wanted or you know, most of them, I think all of yours have chosen to just continue month to month because you're doing such a fantastic job. So tell us how that side works. Cause I love how you get the buy-in of the owner in the process. Yeah. So when we bring on a new client, we always are very transparent. Like it is a month to month contract with us that not only benefits the client, but it benefits us in a way as well, if it's not a good fit. Um, but the reasoning behind that is the goal is not for me to manage your property forever. If, it, if that happens, that's great. We're happy to do it. But we want to make sure that we're teaching people the skills and tools so they can take this and duplicate it as many times over. And who knows, maybe one day I'm going to wake up and I'm going to be like, I don't want to manage properties anymore. Um, but that is something that we try to make sure that all of our clients understand and agree to. So when we sign up with them, there is a fee. Of course, there's a setup cost for us to right like write the listing write any copy for it we schedule the photographers make sure that they're high quality images which are so important for your properties um and then we also create the welcome book and the welcome book is even for people that are staying there long term this is how the day to day of how to use things in the home if you have a complicated TV system. This is how to use it. If if you're in an apartment, where's the trash? Where is the parking gate? Um, anything like that. Those are that's where all that information is going to go to. And we really dissect the property in there uh, to make it as seamless for the guests that are staying in it. Um, aside from that, one of the things we create shared accounts. So we don't, most property managers will actually put properties under their own right. account. We don't do that. Um, we actually do a lot of the logistics is the owners set up their account. We just have access to the, that information and we log in on their behalf and manage the properties on their behalf. This way, I actually believe in transparency and this allows the 
client to actually see how much work we're doing and what we're doing for the property that I know there's people that are like, oh, that backfires. I would not want the client micromanaging or anything like that. But we actually set boundaries in place like all of our clients know that under no circumstances do they respond to the guests like we are the ones that are going to respond. Um, and you'll always get guests like clients that are new and they're a little antsy and they don't know what to do. Um, but as they see how we deal with situations, it is so cool because I get phone calls. I just got a phone call the other day, actually, from a client who had a friend staying at the property. And she took over the like helping that friend answer any questions even though we said give us the number we'll take care of it um and i guess the client um her friend it was a studio and in the studio on the it's a murphy bed that's built in for the bed to sleep on and right beside the murphy bed is a built-in nightstand and it has a little silver button that turns on the lighting up above I guess the her friend put the laptop down on this button, turned all the lights on, but could not for the life of her figure out how to turn it off. Oh, she did no. Not, yeah, she did not message her friend until the next morning at like 7 a.m., which is so painful now that I think about it. But that guest slept with the lights on the whole night. And this oh, is something no. that yeah, could have been easily avoided. Um if she just sent a message, if we like, we always do a check in as soon as they the evening of when they're there, we say like, hey, how's the space is everything looking good. And the reason that we do that is because the faster you can deal with the problems right from the beginning, the hot, like more likely that your guest is not only going to be very impressed by the level of customer service that they're getting, but you can deal with any issues and ensure that you're going to get those higher reviews at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's, that's, it sounds like, you know, you are doing it right with the co-hosting and I've heard that potentially on the co-hosting side, it's a way to, you know, there's certain cities that maybe you have to be a real estate agent to be a property manager. So it's like co-hosting is a way to kind of navigate through the property management limitations as well. Have you seen that? Yeah, I see a lot of people do that. Um, co-hosting is the way because in a way you're helping the owner um, take care of their property and you're dealing with like guest communications, things like that. For the states that do require your property management license, I do, if it is something you're genuinely interested in pursuing as a career and as you get more properties in your portfolio, I do recommend getting your licensing or at least having someone on your team that has their licensing. Um, but if you're in a state that doesn't recognize that as one, then of course, co-hosting is a way to kind of get past that and make sure that you are still able to help out um, hosts that for their properties. Yeah. Love it. Well, Katie, I, I, you know, we've had a lot of heavy topics with uh, so many takeaways. I bet you, I bet you our listeners have paused it so many times and thought, man, I need to take some notes. So I'm thinking let's wrap up with kind of the heartfelt side of Tatiana's story. Do you want to add anything to the co-hosting part before we wrap up that way? No, I don't. Let's go. Okay. So Tatiana, the psychology of space, co-hosting, co how did you get started in this space altogether? Because I think it is a pretty powerful story that will encourage others. Yeah. Um, well, I feel like you said heartwarming. I'm like, it's going to get sad first. Um, but basically, I actually, so eight years ago, um, I was in a very dark period of my life, um, which I would think is my rock bottom. And what was happening is I was grieving. I lost my mother in a tragic car accident. Um, so I was grieving that I got laid off from my nine to five that I was giving 60 hours a week to. Um, and about two months after that, my dog died. So I was like, at the worst of the worst that I could be at. And 
mentally, I just needed to escape and I needed a change. And I think for the people that are really feeling cluttered or overwhelmed in their spaces, these are small changes that you can make. For me, I made a big change and I wanted to go traveling to try to find myself. So what I actually ended up doing was leasing my pro so listing my property online um, and getting a midterm rental uh, that actually booked my property for several months um, while I was away. And not only did it cover my travel, like my day to day bills, it actually covered majority of my travel expense, which really opened up this my mindset to me of like, OK, first of all, here there's a business here. There's something that um, I can do that allows me to still keep my home um, while also being able to really open myself up to new opportunities and new things. And as I was going through that process, taking that stress away of not worrying about the day to day bills of the property or anything or like what next job I was going to get. Um, it really allowed me to learn a lot about myself, to connect with others, learn about others and share stories. And that's truly what I fell in love with. As I was traveling, I took in as much as I could seeing other like hostels and hotels and hospitality, things that people were doing. Um, and when I came home, I took that with me and I said, you know what, let's do, I want to do this full time. I want to create spaces that make people feel at home and welcome and like they can be the best version of themselves. And I, it didn't stop me there. That's where I went out and I got a space um, to arbitrage. I did a seven bedroom house um, and I ran it like a hostel. Um, and we had people that were all over the world staying there. And some of them that I still call friends to this day, which is absolutely amazing. But as hosts, we need to understand like, no matter what people are coming into our spaces for, that we really have an opportunity to leave them with memorable experiences and memories that th that could potentially last a lifetime for them. So please, as hosts, um, as property owners, as investors, like what we're doing is so powerful at the end of the day. So if you if you didn't have to go through all those hard things, and I'm sorry you had to go through them, they are never, they are always tough when you're in the midst of them. Let's say if you didn't have to go through those, where do you think you'd be now versus where you are now? I think I wouldn't, I probably would have played it, played it safe. I wouldn't have been pushed outside of my comfort zone um, I probably would have been at a nine to five again still. And like everything, I'm a big believer in everything happens for a reason. And the universe, God, whatever you believe in, doesn't give you what you cannot handle. And that's the reason I love this business so much. Cause for people like at the very beginning, I was not a risk taker whatsoever. And this business is so, if you think about it, it is so foolproof that like the risk that comes with it is very minimal. And my thing that I always say to my students is, what is the worst situation that could happen if you bought a property and you invested all this money? What's the worst thing that could happen? And they go, well, um, I could lose everything. And I'm like, no, you could. And even if you did lose everything, you could build it back up. But the worst case scenario is you find a long term renter. Right. That is, that's the worst thing that can happen. There is always going to be a need for housing. And even at a furnished property, you can charge more money than you would your long term traditional renter. But at the end of the day, like you just have to be I love you be resilient. And I love how out of the box this industry is. And it's so unconventional. But and that's why all the cities now and the government is finally jumping on because they're like, oh, this is a bit more, this is a bigger movement than we initially thought. And there's something here. But before, like a couple years ago, you would say midterm rental 
our short term rental and people are like, what? Like we don't like even at, we're at the point where banks are now funding these because they see the value in them. And that's what, you know, take the risk if you want, like this industry gave me like no joke financial freedom like i make my schedule i decide what i want to do when i want to do it which isn't always good i don't always know what day it is but like <laughs> these, are, these are the things but like i would have never had these opportunities and i think i forget sometimes to really be so grateful that i'm living these experiences now and i want every single family um our person out there to be able to have that that stress-free experience of course hosting is stressful in its own right but you know to make it that little bit less i do believe everyone at the end of the day should try to get into real estate of, of some form i love it well tatiana it was so good to get to know you and your story and also to get some tangible design tips because i think um, a lot of times as investors we're like okay, but we have to make this look pretty and functional and inviting and, and affordable all at the same time. So um, the steps that you've given us um, and the mindset as well has been something that I think oh, so many people are going to be able to take and run with and implement. So thank you so much. This was so valuable for everyone. No, that's thank you for having me so much. <laughs> Tell everyone how they should connect with you if they want to keep up with your daily posts or your emails or whatever new information design wise you're spitting out yes so i am always showing design tips on my instagram at tatiana tt um or you can you can follow me on there or you can definitely check out what i'm up to at www.levelupyourlistingsummit.com um we will be hosting our next summit march 11th to 13th um in scott 2024 yep 2024 and that is going to be full of tons of information hopefully we'll see furnished finder there <laughs> but that is tons of information um for people that are wanting to really build their not only short-term rental but mid-term rental business and scale their portfolios love it well thank you so much for being with us today as always have a great week everyone and don't forget to like subscribe and comment see you next week